Hey everyone, my name is Nathan Cooper and welcome back to SIS Film Breakdowns. The next division we're going to take a look at is the AFC South. When taking a cumulative look at our average draft grades by division, the AFC South ranked the lowest with all four teams ranking in the bottom 13. Despite the low rankings, these teams drafted some difference makers. Let's get into a few of these potential impact players that were drafted into the division. First, with a look at the Houston Texans. The Texans were another team without a first-round pick. They only had five picks total in the 2020 draft, and only two of them were players featured in the SAS Football Rookie Handbook. Both of those players were defensive linemen, TCU's Ross Blacklock and Florida's Jonathan Grenard. We're going to take a closer look at Ross Blacklock. Blacklock measured in at 6 feet, 3 and 1 eighth of an inch, 290 pounds at the combine. He's not a guy that is going to test really well, although he did post a 4.9 flat in the 40, which is a solid time for his size. After missing the 2018 season due to an Achilles injury he suffered in fall camp, he came back in 2019 to tie for the team lead in sacks and be named to the All-Big 12 first team. The Texans selected him in the second round, 40th overall. We're going to take a look at a couple of his plays from last season's games against Oklahoma and Texas. This first play against Oklahoma, Blacklock is lined up in a two-eye to the offense's left. It's going to be a stretch play towards Blacklock. At the snap of the ball, we can really see how quick Blacklock is off the ball and gets his hands up on the blocker. He has good leverage and extension and is really only using his outside arm here to get under the guard and push him back. Once the running back comes his way, Blacklock throws the guard aside and gets in on the tackle. The next play is from the Texas game, and Blacklock is lined up head up on the center in a zero. At the snap of the ball, he slants to the right, and once he gets around to the tackle, he again shows good leverage and solid hand placement to get into the blocker and drive him back into the quarterback. Even though he doesn't get there in time for the sack, he's still able to hit Ellinger, force him to throw an off-target pass. Blacklock has the ability to play on all three downs and should be a disruptive part of the Texans' defensive line moving forward. Looking at this past season, he finished with 40 tackles, 24 pressures, and an adjusted tackle depth plus of 159, which really stands out. The Indianapolis Colts also were without a first-round pick after trading it to San Francisco for DeForest Buckner. However, they had two of the first nine picks of the second round, where they grabbed offensive weapons Michael Pittman and Jonathan Taylor to surround new quarterback Phillip Rivers, before taking Julian Blackman to help the secondary. They also selected Jacob Eason in the middle rounds to sit behind their two veteran quarterbacks and hopefully groom him into being the guy in a few years. For this breakdown, we're going to take a little closer look at Michael Pittman. At the combine, Pittman measured in at 6 feet, 4 inches even, 224 pounds. He put up some really good numbers, which included a 4.52 40-yard dash, a 4.14 shuttle, and a 6.96 three-cone. The son of a Super Bowl champion running back, Pittman battled through some injuries during his career to finish off a 2019 senior season by being named a second-team AP All-American. Pittman was the Colts' first selection in the 2020 draft, being taken number 34 overall. We're going to take a look at a couple plays from last season's game against Utah. The first play sees Pittman lined up as the number two to the trip side. He's going to run a fade off the line, and at the snap, he wins now. He does a good job using his offhand to keep some separation, and when the ball is nearing, he tracks the ball very well, using good body control to make the grab, and then even is able to gain a few extra yards along the way after making the catch. On this next play, Pittman is lined up at the top of the screen as the single receiver to the left side of the formation. And off the line, he's going to run what looks to be a slight double move, but I think it's just a fade that he's trying to jab and set up for himself. And as the ball approaches, he does a great job of tracking the ball and going up to get the ball at its highest point, something that he does extremely well. Now, not only does he go up and make the grab, but he's able to accelerate quickly and make it all the way to the end zone for a touchdown. That's that 4-5-2 speed that he's able to show. Now, on the tight view, we can see the jab that he uses to hold the safety in the middle of the field and then track and adjust to the football going up at his highest point, bringing it down, and taking it all the way in for the score, something that he was able to do a lot of during his time at USC. Pittman brings sure hands and plus tracking ability to the Colts offense. His 2019 season saw him haul in over 100 balls for a 93% on-target catch rate. Pulling out just vertical routes, he grabbed 8 of 11 catchable targets for nearly 300 yards and 3 touchdowns for an 18 yards per target average, which was 5th among all receivers with at least 15 targets on those routes. 
The previous two teams were without a first rounder, but the Jaguars were one of the teams with two first rounders. After losing much of the defense over the past two seasons, Jacksonville attempted to reload with CJ Henderson at corner and Caleb on chase on on the edge to rush the passer opposite 2019 first rounder, Josh Allen. Though they went rather heavy on the defensive side of the ball with most of their 12 picks, especially at the top of the draft, I'm going to highlight two wide receivers that could bring some value to the offensive side of the ball in LaVisca Chenault and Colin Johnson. First, let's look at Colorado wide receiver LaVisca Chenault. At the combine, he measured in at 6 feet and 5 eighths of an inch, 227 pounds. He only tested in the 40 where he posted a 4-5-8 in the bench where he put up 17 reps. It was announced that he was going to have core muscle surgery in March after also missing parts of each of the past two seasons. Even with missing time, he was still named a first-team All-Pac-12 performer in 2018 and made the second team in 2019. Jacksonville selected him in the second round with pick number 42 overall. Let's take a look at one of his plays this past season, also from the Utah game. Chenault is lined up at the top of the screen to the single receiver side across from Jalen Johnson, someone who we've taken a look at previously. Chenault is going to run a simple curl route, but we can see a lot of what he brings to the table on this one play. Now at the top of the route, he is quick to break down, and although Johnson is right with him, he has the savvy to work outside away from Johnson to give his quarterback an easier throw. Once he hauls in the pass, Chenault turns into a running back, lowers his shoulder, and bulldozes through a defender for extra yards. On the tight view, we get a good look at him working away from the defender, using strong hands to secure the catch, and then lowering his shoulder to break through a tackle and gain extra yards. Chenault is a versatile player that can play receiver, tight end, running back, or even wildcat quarterback, something I'm sure the Jaguars will experiment with. When looking at his last two seasons, he's converted on a 91% on-target catch rate and has averaged nearly 7.5 yards per reception after the catch. Now let's take a look at Colin Johnson, wide receiver from Texas. He measured in at 6 feet, 5 and 5 eighths inches, 222 pounds at the combine, but was only able to bench as he was still recovering from a hamstring injury. A captain for the Longhorns, Johnson left Texas 5th in program history in receiving yards and 6th in receptions. The Jaguars drafted him in the 5th round with the 165th overall pick. Let's take a look at one of his plays from this past season's game against TCU. Johnson is lined up as a wide receiver to the left of the formation at the top of the screen and is going to run a fade route. After a hop off the line, Johnson accelerates into his route. He doesn't possess elite speed, so he's not going to be able to run away from many corners. However, he does show good tracking ability and uses his body well to create separation. His quarterback sees he isn't going to win deep, so he throws the back shoulder. Johnson has good body control here, does a good job adjusting to the throw and securing the catch. On the other view, we get a good look at the subtle offhand push that he gives, gain himself some separation as he adjusts back to make a great catch on the sideline. Johnson isn't a blazer, but has good hands and can win one-on-one -on -one matchups with the ball in the air. He should give Jacksonville a solid target on the outside. We can see from his stats over the past two seasons that when healthy, he's able to put up numbers. When he's on the field, he can haul in passes, as evidenced by a 90 and 91% on-target catch rate. After taking home our number one draft class in 2019, the Tennessee Titans followed it up by taking the lowest rated first rounder, according to the SIS Football Rookie Handbook, and Georgia offensive lineman Isaiah Wilson. The Titans needed O-line help, and Wilson will bring some push in the run game, but will need to work in most areas early on in his career. In the second round, they backed it up by getting arguably one of the top corners in the class in LSU's Christian Fulton. Their next selection is who we're going to highlight, and that's Appalachian State running back Darrington Evans. At the combine, Evans measured in at 5 feet, 10 and 1 eighth of an inch, 203 pounds. He put up some very good numbers in Indianapolis, which included a 4-4-1 40-yard dash, a 37-inch vertical jump, and 20 reps on the bench press. Evans entered the draft early after a 2019 junior season in which he scored 24 total touchdowns and was named the Sun Belt Offensive Player of the Year. The Titans drafted Evans late in the third round with a 93rd overall pick. We're going to take a look at a couple of his plays from the 2019 game against Charlotte. The first play is going to be a zone run play up the middle. Now after getting the handoff, Evans does a great job of pressing the hole and allowing the cutback lane to open up. Once he sees the cutback, he has the burst and acceleration to quickly bust through the line. One-on-one, -on -one, he has the ability to make defenders miss and gain valuable yardage after first contact. 
The next play is actually the first play of the game. And I'm going to play it at real speed so we can get a sense of the burst and second gear that he possesses. Granted, he doesn't have to do much here other than run. We can really see how he accelerates and gets up to speed. Once he's through the hole and around the 30-yard line, we really get that second gear from here. He's not going to be caught. And he takes that all the way to the end zone. You can really see the burst, the acceleration, and the speed as he gets up to gear and then really is able to take it all the way for the score. The Titans obviously have Derrick Henry as their number one guy, but Evans has the ability as a change of pace back and should be able to spell Henry and contribute for the offense when his name is called. When looking at last season, Evans was ninth in the country in rushing yards with nearly 1,500 while also collecting 18 touchdowns on the ground. He can also do it in any scheme as he had a positive play rate of 41% on zone runs and 50% with a gap scheme. Now what questions need to be answered moving forward in the AFC South? Did the Texans give Deshaun Watson enough weapons after trading away DeAndre Hopkins? Can Ryan Tannehill repeat his 2019 performance and take the Titans back to the playoffs? Will newly acquired Phillip Rivers get the Colts back over the hump and compete for a division title? Can Gardner Minshew and Jacksonville's young, new-look roster rack up some wins? We'll see what sort of contributions the 2020 draft class has on the AFC South over the next few seasons and find out what the answers are to these questions. Make sure to go get the SIS Football Rookie Handbook or register for a free trial on the SIS Data Hub to see all of these stats and more for every player and also tune in each week to the Off the Charts podcast. Thanks for watching SIS Film Breakdowns.